In this video, we're going to talk about an application of particle in a box, and this is the concept of quantum tunneling. All right, so let's look up here at this classical example of a hill. All right, so if you had some kind of ball, a big ball that was heavy, um, if you wanted to get the ball over the hill, you would actually have to push the ball up and then allow it to go down the hill. In other words, it would have to go over the hill to get to the other side. And classically speaking, in anything that we've see, we can see macroscopically in real life, this is the case. Unless you actually dig a hole under the hill, but we're not going to assume that. But if you do want to think of digging under the hill, that's actually sort of how it might behave on a quantum level. All right? So there's a concept. Let's say this is an electron. Let's say the particle here is an electron. There's actually some probability that this electron could actually so-called tunnel through this hill and just appear on the other side. So literally, it's almost, you could think of it, almost like teleportation. Um, it's not really, but for a conceptual framework, the particle could be over here on one side of this barrier and then just appear on the other. Well, that's not possible classically speaking, but it turns out on a quantum level it is. So to understand it, let's go down to this, this picture right here. All right. This is actually part of um, a particle in a box framework. Now, when we did particle in a box, we, uh, we, ha we could call it an infinite potential well. Because you have to imagine, remember, we've got a particle, we're confining it in a certain area, say over here on the left, and this barrier, which in the normal model, has an infinite height. That's how we conceptualize it. The way we talk about it, the particle being unable to escape out of the well, is the potential energy in the well is zero, and then this barrier rep would represent a potential energy of infinity. So there's no way that the particle could escape out of the well. It's impossible. It's confined in here. But now imagine a situation where the potential energy in the well is still zero, or it's still negligible, but now the barrier is no longer infinitely high. Or in other words, it doesn't have a potential energy of infinity. Its potential energy is finite. So to put it in bullet form, a particle has some probability of tunneling if it meets a few criteria. One, this barrier cannot be infinite. It has to be a finite potential energy. And also on either side of the barrier, that particle has to have less kinetic energy than the potential energy is. So in other words, let's just say the potential energy was arbitrarily a number 1,000. The kinetic energy on either side would have to be less than 1,000. Okay? In other words, the amount of kinetic energy has to be less than the amount of potential energy of the barrier. Okay? Also, the barrier, if you want to think of it in terms of width, has to be relatively thin. Okay? Also, the particle needs to have wave-like properties. In other words, it has to be quantized. It can't have classical macroscopic properties. It has to behave as a wave in order to be able to tunnel across this barrier. And if those three or four conditions, however you want to talk about them, are met, it has some probability of tunneling. Okay? Now, here's kind of what we think happens. When the particle is is over here in the actual well, or on the other side for that matter, in red as you see, it has a normal sinusoidal wave function. Okay? When we talked about particle in a box, we saw it was a sine function. Okay? It was sine of a bunch of stuff. Okay? That's what we see right here. Okay? However, in the moments where it is tunneling across the barrier, you see here in blue, the wave function actually momentarily transforms into one of exponential decay. This is actually the wave function right here in the tunnel in blue. We actually see the wave function xi is equal to some n, a normalization constant, times e to the negative beta x. And because this exponential function has a negative sign in there, we know it's exponential decay. And this beta is equal to all of this expression right here. And so that's your wave function inside the barrier. And then once it gets across the barrier, it goes back to a sinusoidal wave function, but you'll notice the amplitude of it is decreased. Okay? The wave function itself does not change, but the amplitude does uh, decrease when it gets across to the other side of the barrier. Okay? Now, what is the quantum explanation as to why it's able to tunnel like this? Because how is there some probability that it's able to exist on both sides? How is it able to just go across the barrier? Well, let's say we have this barrier, and it is. 
very thin and it has a finite potential energy. And remember, this barrier doesn't have to be like a wall. It can just be a physical space through which an electron would have to travel, okay? According to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you cannot know the position of an electron precisely. You can't know the position. There are no solutions in quantum with, a, with an exact value of one or zero, okay? So for example, if I was looking at an atom literally on your counter right now. It's some atom. Remember, atoms have electrons, right? There's some probability that electron, one of those electrons, it's a negligible probability, but there's some probability it's on Pluto. There's some probability it's not even in this galaxy, maybe in the nearby Andromeda galaxy, and even further. Now, is it okay to neglect that probability? Absolutely. That's ridiculous. No one would do that. No one would actually use that in a calculation. But, there are no solutions with an exact nature of one or zero. So you can't say that an electron is not on Pluto that's supposed to be on your counter, right? You can't say that. So if I were to say this particle has to be over here on the left side of this barrier, it has to be, it's all over there. No, that, that is a violation of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So there has to be, particularly if this barrier is thin, there has to be some probability it's over on the right side as well because you can't say that it's not over here. It's impossible. It has to be maybe to some extent over here, okay? And so because we can never say the exact position and there has to be some probability it's over here, the electron can potentially tunnel over to the other side. Now, um, if you want to actually calculate the probability of tunneling for any particle, you actually just use this expression. So the probability of something tunneling is actually the exponent of negative 4 times a pi over h. h is Planck's constant. a is the width of the barrier. And it's times the square root of 2m, where m is the mass of the particle, say an electron, times the difference in the potential and kinetic energy. So if you actually knew approximately the kinetic energy of the particle, v is the potential energy, which has to be finite, of the particle. And you would calculate all this, and that would be the probability of tunneling. And actually, we'll actually do some practice problems with calculating this probability in the next video.